Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my very first what's for dinner and right here it is Monday night and we decided to have some of that cauliflower gnocchi from Trader Joe's is where we get that. We used this vegan and cashew pesto and I also tossed in some prosciutto at the very end for a nice salty bait. So this was very easy to put together. I'm going to show you how I did it. I basically just followed the package directions on the back, which was to add it to a pan, add like a fourth a cup of water, and cover it for about seven minutes. But I will walk you through all of that. This was a really easy dinner. So here I go, just adding it in there. And I will say that these, um, they taste really good, first of all. Um, but they did stick to the bottom of the pan. If I could go back in time, I would have added some uh, oil to the bottom. I just didn't think that I needed to since I was adding water, but there you see I'm just covering it and that's going to go for about seven minutes. My gnocchi have been covered and cooking for seven minutes, just like the bag says. I just prepared it according to the package. I did add some salt and some pepper to mine, and I added some red chili flake as well because we just like spicy food. And now I'm going to turn my heat off. And I'm going to remove it for a second. And I'm going to add some of this pesto. That looks good. Here is mine plated up. All I did was I transferred the gnocchi to another bowl, a serving bowl, and I tossed in some prosciutto, just raw. And here's what it looks like. And that is dinner for Monday night. It's Tuesday here at the Holland house. And we're having turkey meatloaf, one of my husband and I's favorite and a go-to meal of ours. So. I've got two pounds of ground turkey here. I've salted and peppered it. I've added added in some garlic powder and Italian seasoning. Now you can uh, adjust the seasoning to your taste. I put about two teaspoons of Italian seasoning and uh, one teaspoon of garlic powder and then plenty of salt. This is a lot of meat. It's two pounds worth and we're a small family, but I'm telling you, there's nothing better than turkey meatloaf except for turkey meatloaf leftover sandwiches. So put one of these bad boys in between two pieces of bread with some cheese. Yeah, that's almost better than the meatloaf itself. So you're going to need to add to this mixture two eggs, a cup of Italian breadcrumbs, or panko if you have it, either one will do. I've sauteed some veggies here. Ignore that uh, liquid in the bottom. That is just the water that the mushrooms omitted and I'm gonna discard that. Uh, I have onion, garlic, mushrooms, and I melted five ounces of spinach into there. And this is all gonna bring moisture into our meatloaf. That's why I'm adding all these veggies. And it's gonna be so delicious. And I salted these veggies as well. I want to say I sauteed them for about seven minutes. Um, you should saute them until you don't have any excess liquid anymore, but I guess I was impatient. I'm really hungry. So I am just going to combine everything into this bowl and then I'm going to use what I like to call the claw to get in there and um, combine it all. And then I like to make my meatloaf on a baking sheet. I don't like to eat anything swimming in fat. This way, when you form the meatloaf freehand right here on just some foil lined baking sheet, just a foil lined baking sheet, you can kind of discard any excess fat drippings that come out 
and that's just what I prefer to do in this case. And as for the topping, in here I have about a cup, if not a little bit less, of ketchup. I've got two teaspoons of dry mustard, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and I you can't tell because it's the same color, but I did add in a couple of teaspoons of sriracha because we like the heat in this house. Uh, but that is totally optional. You can just do this, the classic ketchup brown sugar. Add in that dry mustard though because it really adds something in my opinion. Um, and this is what's going to go on top. So I'm going to show you everything once I combine our mixture here. Give me a sec. Where we can go, where it's all shining like the snow. Listen to your heartbeat, don't you know that I just want to be with you? Baby, there is a place where we can go, where it's all shining like the snow. Listen to your heartbeat, don't you know that I just want to be with you? for 30 minutes then after that 30 minutes is up I'm going to top it with the rest of the glaze put it in for another 30 minutes at 350 then when it's done you're just going to want to let it set for about 10 minutes out of the oven that's what I usually do um, just give it a chance to like cool down a bit and then you're going to have meatloaf and my husband just said to me and my husband's six foot, like, I don't know. He's six foot like exactly. A, <laughs> he's my cameraman also, part time. Um, I pay him really well. <laughs> anyway, he just said to me, he likes this meatloaf better than like a ground beef traditional meatloaf. And I agree. I think this meatloaf has way more flavor and just deliciousness in it uh, than the traditional. And I've made so many meatloafs in my short, short life. <laughs> Um, that I, I quite know what I'm talking about. So, I'm getting stuck. Let's put this bad boy into the oven. And we are gonna see him in 30 minutes and I can't wait to eat. I'm gonna serve this with some steamed broccoli on the side. If I wasn't on a diet, lifestyle change, whatever you wanna call it, you know I would serve this with some mashed potatoes, but I'll do that another day. My meatloaf is fully cooked and it's ready to go. I'm just letting it cool for a couple of minutes while I'm cooking our broccoli, or uh, steaming the broccoli, I should say. And I will show you what it looks like when it's all plated up. I cannot wait for this. I'm telling you, this is one of our favorite recipes. I think I mentioned that before, but you have to try this and if you do for me make mashed potatoes with it <laughs> here is my plate I'm gonna get to eating and that was dinner for Tuesday hey guys it's Wednesday night and tonight for dinner we are having a low-carb sour cream beef bake I found this recipe on Pinterest 
and I may not follow the recipe exactly. I'm thinking about adding in some onion or some pepper, but I don't know if that's actually gonna happen or not. I'm kind of lazy and I don't feel like chopping anything, but I need to first cook this up. Let's see what I need to do. I've got the recipe right here. Um, so I already cooked my cauliflower rice. It's over here. I'm letting it cool. Oh, there are flies in here, you guys. I hate summer for that reason. I mean, I love summer, but that's one thing I don't care for about summer. There's so many flies and they get in your house. Anyway, I microwave this and I'm letting it cool a little bit because I am gonna squeeze the water out so that, um, cause there's like a note about how this casserole is kind of watery and I don't want that. So I'm gonna take care of that by squeezing out some, if not all, of the water from my cauliflower rice. And so the next thing I'm gonna do, I already shredded my cheese that I'm gonna need. That's sharp cheddar cheese and need two cups. So I'm just gonna get to work on cooking this up and I'll show you what happens next. Okay, so um, I did have footage of cooking up that ground beef, but I don't really know what happened to that, but I did cook up that ground beef. I didn't put any oil or anything when it was done. I just drained the fat and the excess grease, and I added in a 12 ounce can of tomato sauce. Uh, I added a little salt and pepper, and I stirred all of that up in here. I'm just squeezing out the water from my cauliflower rice. This place where we can go, where it's always shining like the snow. Listen to your heartbeat, don't you know? And I am going to add that into a big bowl now. Um, that bowl is filled with sour cream and cottage cheese. And that is going to be the bottom layer of the casserole. Oh, I can get enough, get enough. Don't ever let me be away from you. I'm gonna hold you tight, hold you tight. Cause you're the only thing that I can't lose I never needed you to give me things I never needed you to diamond rings All I ever need, I need, I All I ever need is here with you This place where we can go Where it's always shining like the snow Listen to your heartbeat You get the things, but I don't care Be there is a place where we can go Where it's always shining like the snow Listen to your heartbeat, don't you know That I just wanna be with you I put my casserole in the oven at 350 about five minutes ago and it's uh, gonna be in there for 20 minutes. See, there's 14 minutes left, just about. And then I will show you how I top it and we will serve it up. 
All right, this is what it looks like all plated up and I topped mine and my husband's with some more green onion and he already gave it a taste and he said it was amazing and it smells so good. So I can't wait to dig in. This was a new recipe that I tried and this is what we had for dinner on Wednesday night. Okay, this was pizza night for us. It was Thursday night and I had made this whole wheat pizza crust. Uh, I got the recipe from Pinterest. It's no rise. It's really easy to throw together and that's why I love making it in a pinch. So here I've got a piece of parchment laid down. I have already preheated my oven to about 475. You want it to go pretty much as hot as it can. If you have a pizza stone, make sure it's in there preheating with the oven. It gives you the best crust ever. And I like to bake my homemade pizzas. Um, I like to slide the parchment paper onto the pizza stone with my pizza and it just really comes out super nice. We're gonna be making a buffalo chicken pizza. So here I am melting some butter. I'm going to grate some garlic into there and let that cook for um, just a little bit until I can smell the garlic and it doesn't take long at all. I just wanted that butter to melt and get a little bubbly. And then I'm going to add some buffalo sauce to that and a shredded rotisserie chicken that my hubs shredded for me so sweetly and nicely. So thanks, babe. Love you. Oh, I can get enough, get enough Don't ever let me be away from you I'm gonna hold you tight, hold you tight Cause you're the only thing that I can't lose I never needed you to give me things I never needed you to diamond rings All I ever need, I need, I That I just want you You get me things But I don't care Okay, so we popped our buffalo chicken pizza With sharp cheddar cheese and pepper jack It's just what I had left over in the fridge And I realized I put a lot of cheese on here um, So, you know, to each his own And this is how it comes out, you guys Thank you so much for watching, and I just have to say, you have to cook your pizza the way I told you. I had it in there for 10 minutes, and it is perfection. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.